in the process of building a spectroheliscope, and I thought, yeah, this would be a good idea to make a video of it. The only thing is, I don't know if this thing is going to work or not, and there's a good chance it won't. But I'm going to go ahead, and if it doesn't work, then you'll know what I did wrong, and maybe that'll be useful. So here's my ZMAX layout. It uses a 4-inch singlet lens with a weak Barlow, and its only purpose is really to refocus the image because a singlet has a different focus for different wavelengths. It then bounces off of two mirrors and is focused on the first slit of the monochromator. The monochromator is an Ebert monochromator using a 6-inch mirror, 57-inch focal length, bounces off the mirror once, it hits a grating, then bounces back to the mirror and finally comes up to the second slit, which isolates the wavelength of interest. The monochromatic light now bounces off another fold mirror through a relay lens and then to the eyepiece after bouncing off of another fold mirror. If that's all it did, all you would see would be a slit image. But the two mirrors in the center are oscillating mirrors. They vibrate back and forth which scans the image across the slit and if it's done fast enough, I mean 24 frames a second, then you'll see a continuous image without flickering. At least that's the plan. And here's my CMAX layout. I had a 300 line per millimeter grading that I was going to use. It's too coarse, but I was going to use it as a setup part, but it was a little bit too big. So I decided to try to cut it down. I put a little strip of surface saver on the edge and it seemed to tolerate that okay. So I applied the surface saver to the whole thing. And after cutting it down, when I pulled the surface saver off, it pulled the diffraction grating off too. Not exactly what I planned. So here's what I've got built so far. I have the top off of here, but this is a eighth inch multi birch box um, using some, uh, some uh, braces along the corners. You can see my singlet. I have uh, four blocks of maple that are drilled and tapped uh, with a nylon, not nylon, a Teflon piece in front of it to, to hold it in place. This is my six inch spherical mirror. It uh, has a 57 inch focal length. And uh, it's set in the, it's held in place with brackets and it's actually glued onto the, uh, to the uh, uh, mirror support. I've got a uh, couple pieces of foam board to, to baffle off uh, the the telescope section from the monochromator section. Here's the front of my spectroheliscope. Here's my singlet lens and its cell. Um, and I got three adjustment screws for the spherical mirror that is part of the Ebert collimator. This is where the um, the light comes from from the from the telescope. I'm going to have a um, Barlow lens in here, and this slides on some Teflon pads held in place with a set screw and Teflon. So it's this will this will have to focus back and forth because the singlet will have a different focus for different wavelengths. So the Barlow will correct the focus for, for each wavelength. From my remaining one-inch brass strip. I cut out this piece. This is going to be the holder for my mirrors. This is the heart of the spectroheliscope. This is a synthesizer, they, they call it. And I have, I'll have two mirrors that will vibrate. And they're, um, they're going to be mounted on my piece of brass. Uh, these are two pieces of Pyrex that I ground down to about two and a half millimeters. Um, but in doing so, they became concave, so I had to refigure these back down to flat, and they only need to be between one to two fringes uh, flatness is, is good enough. 
I bent my my brass piece so that I could get um, my two shafts closer to the center line of the of the of the brass. I I got off of eBay uh, some stainless steel three millimeter shaft, and I curled a piece of brass around it so that I could. Uh, make a holder for, for each side here Then I took these and put them in a, a V block and soldered these to my to my brass To make sure that they were in, uh, aligned in the center line And these mirrors like I said will mount on mount on here uh, also on eBay I got a, I got some Three millimeter ID ball bearings. That's gonna rotate my fixture, and then also you can get um, um, a locking collar, and I took a locking collar and soldered a small piece of brass on it, kind of like wings, and this is gonna help me do two things. First it's gonna it, it's going to let me balance this whole thing, the mirrors and everything when they get mounted on here. I could rotate this to balance it and I can add weight to one side or the other to make sure that everything is balanced out. Now these are a couple of um, uh, neodymium magnets and that's the other part uh, these these are going to drive the um, the mirrors. Um, they're going to vibrate the mirrors. Um, I'm going to take an, another magnet and um, uh, of opposing polarity, and they're going to push each side so that th there's going to um, it's going to basically act like springs. And then I hope to take a electromagnet and uh, push one of these magnets at a certain frequency, so it'll cause the whole thing to to oscillate at uh, the right frequency. Anyway, that's the plan. Okay, so here's my synthesizer assembled. Here's my two Pyrex mirrors. And they're stuck onto my brass with uh, three pieces of double-sided tape, and so so allows it to rotate. And then over here is my um, um, locking collar with the brass and and magnets on either end. And I have um, two opposing magnets um, of the same polarity, so that it uh, repels. And that causes it to vibrate like so. That's the old principle. I don't know what the frequency is, and I need to make sure that I can get it to vibrate fast enough so there won't be any flicker. Um, and then I'm going to drive it with an electromagnet behind one of these magnets. And if I pulse it at the right frequency, it'll cause it to vibrate continuously. And let me see if I can. This was kind of neat. Set up a little. Laser on here and cause this thing to vibrate. See the screen there. So, um, see it, it vibrates, but probably not fast enough right now. I've got a diffraction grating on order, 1800 line pairs, and in the meantime, I need to figure out the electronics on how to drive this uh, synthesizer and make it vibrate properly. They say Earth is headed for disaster. 
cataclysmic world catastrophe. For the temperature on Earth has started rising.